I actually didn't choose the parts for our gaming PC today, but rather these are the specs that Bethesda recommends you play Starfield with, at least if you want to achieve their minimum required specs. And today we're going to see if that was a mistake or not. Either way though, this super budget 400-ish dollar gaming PC turned out ridiculous in terms of both aesthetics and price to performance. And I'm going to show you exactly how you can buy and build this for yourself so you can enjoy Starfield and literally every other game in 1080p with it. Real quickly, since I know my audience is always interested in saving money when building and selling gaming PCs, today's video sponsor, GVG Mall, can definitely help you out with that. I've worked with GVG Mall for so long now and have bought probably close to 100 keys myself, and they're hooking you all up big time with the 25% off discount if you use code ZTT18 with the link in the description. GVG Mall has Windows activation keys as well as Microsoft Office, game keys for platforms like Steam and Origin, and they even have console stuff too like PSN and Xbox prepaid cards. Activating Windows couldn't be easier, just paste in the key that you get instantly after paying on the website, so remove that ugly unactivated watermark for good. Don't forget to use ZTT18 for 25% off with the link in the description. I'm sure you've seen all the hype around this week's Starfield launch and every streamer and game reviewer is talking about it, but this custom one of one PC build is my own version of hopping on the bandwagon. Everyone seems to be talking about and reviewing this game pretty positively from what I've been seeing, but in terms of this project here in the ZTT HQ, there wasn't a whole lot of positivity. Honestly, a lot of negativity. I let our new guy Jake build his first ever PC for a YouTube video and things got a little chaotic and somehow we got scammed for like the third video in a row when purchasing this case. I'm beginning to see a pattern here that I'm not so sure if I like. My wife Diana also got one of those Cricut machines that can custom cut stickers and vinyl and it was her first time making cuts for us as well. We built all these stickers and vinyl in house by the way. Either way though, with a little bit of extra money and just the refusal of failure, we got this build done and I'm gonna show you how you can do it for yourself without making the same mistakes that we did. Let's first take a look at these system requirements and you can see where I'm basing this build from. For the minimum specs, since I know a lot of you are budget ballers, the CPU Bethesda recommends is an AMD Ryzen 5 2600X or an Intel i7 6800K. So naturally we went with Ryzen because that makes the most sense. I picked up this 2600X for $49 used on eBay and this was the cheapest option I had available. But if you are copying this build from home, I recommend spending like five or 10 extra bucks and getting a Ryzen 5 3600. The 3600 is on a much better and newer generation of Ryzen CPUs and it only costs a couple of extra dollars more, but the only reason I went with the 2600X is again because of that spec sheet. Speaking of which, the spec sheet also recommends 16 gigabytes of RAM and I picked up this G-Skill Ripjaws 2x8 gigabyte 3200 megahertz kit for a pretty solid deal of $25 used on eBay. I haven't bought used RAM in a while now because the price of new DDR4 is so cheap, but this did help us save like 10 or $15 and it worked perfectly fine, so that was definitely a dub. And finally for the graphics, card, they're recommending an RX 5700 or a GTX 1070 Ti. Honestly, between those two recommendations, I'd personally recommend a 5700 all day, even more so a 5700 XT if you could spend a few extra dollars. But for this video specifically, I actually went with the 1070 Ti. The 1070 Ti can be found for much cheaper right now because there's just so many more of them on the used market. I scored mine for $120 used on eBay. And at the time of purchasing these parts, I simply could not find any good deals on a 5700. In terms of straight up performance, the 5700 does beat the 1070 Ti on average for most games, the 5700 XT even more so, but also since the 1070 Ti is a more popular choice for gamers, I thought it was a good choice for today's build. I just released a TikTok, by the way, about the GPU market share this year, and although AMD is gaining ground, Nvidia still has an 86% market share, so it's clearly the more popular option. Follow me over there on TikTok, by the way. But yeah, this is an Asus ROG Strix version with 8GB of VRAM, so it's a very solid model, and I do like that it has some RGB action to make the build pop a little bit more. The one down downfall is that there's definitely some GPU sag going on as I'm sure some of you have noticed already. A sag bracket would have helped here but not 100% required. And going back to the spec sheet, the only other thing worth noting here is that it says an SSD is required with 125 gigabytes of available space. So I ended up grabbing this one terabyte Patriot P310 NVMe drive for $35 brand new on Amazon. There's not a huge advantage of going with a used SSD these days because you just don't see that many being sold for less than the cost of a budget brand new option like this. And SSDs do have a life cycle so buying used is always 
always a bit riskier. For the other parts to fill in where the system requirements page doesn't help us, the power supply is another Apivia Prestige 600 watt, and again, this is the best tier C budget model that's readily available for $51. I also have some white easy DIY cable extensions plugged into it, but that's only after I told Jake to originally install the black ones, which was before my artistic vision of this build truly came to life. And honestly, that was one of the main problems of this entire project in general. You may have noticed from those B-roll shots that the parts that Jake was building this PC with originally is definitely a little bit different than what you're seeing right now. I was originally just planning on this being an all black case with some RGB splash in there, but things turned out crazy different, but definitely for the best. The main thing that caused this artistic reversal is because of the case and oh boy, I really hate this thing. This is the Game Max Destroyer, which is listed on Newegg brand new for $56, and I thought this was gonna be a deal and a half. You can see right here in the title and in the description on Newegg that it comes with four pre-installed ARGB fans, but we learned the very hard way that these fan RGBs cannot change color outside of Unicorn Puke. Jake built this entire PC by himself, and then he had to ask me for help on how to change the color of the RGB fans, only for us to discover that the A in ARGB was completely fake news. After doing some digging, I did discover that on Game Max's website, it lists these fans as FRGB or fixed RGB, meaning they can't change color. So why on earth is it listed on Newegg as ARGB? I don't think many people have gone through the pain of building an entire gaming PC only to realize that you probably have to rebuild it. And for this build, we kind of had to rebuild it twice. Not only did I later have to completely uninstall these garbage FRGB Molex powered fans and send them straight to the trash can, but I also screwed up the motherboard choice on this PC, which caused another rebuild as well. So if you take a look at these pictures on Newegg, this case looks like a very normal mid-tower ATX size case, especially when you see those three RGB or FRGB fans up here at the front, but the kicker is that this is a micro ATX case, not ATX. I actually thought Jake was just being a noob when he told me that this ASRock B450 Pro 4 wasn't gonna fit in here, so I grabbed the motherboard like a blue collar boomer trying to fix all the mistakes that the intern is making, only to find out that this is actually a micro ATX case and it's just a very weird layout in here. To be fair, the Newegg listing does have this listed as micro ATX, and thankfully I did have another B450 and motherboard in the studio that I picked up recently. This is the MS B450M Bazooka Max Wi-Fi, and I actually saved money compared to our original board choice as this one was only $58 used on Mercari. I had to tell Jake that he basically had to uninstall everything that he just put together on the motherboard, such as the CPU, the cooler, the RAM, and the SSD, and reinstall it all to a different motherboard, and this build was a roller coaster that spanned for several days. And yes, I promise that we're gonna get to the benchmarks of this PC for Starfield and all the other games in 1080p. I'm basically just using this video as a vent session, and you guys are my therapist. Honestly, I should do this more often. Once we did get the motherboard case and RGB situation figured out, it was time to fully dial in the aesthetics because we weren't there just yet without the stickers, vinyl, or some sort of Funko Pop or action figure. Starting with the prop, my editor Brian actually picked out this super cool astronaut space projector, and my son is going to love this when we wrap up this project. This one was an easy win. And as far as the vinyl and the stickers go, this actually went pretty smoothly after Diana got everything figured out. And honestly, this is pretty much the future of budget ZTT builds. The whole reason we agreed to buy this Cricut vinyl machine for ZTT was because of having the option to create things like this. All of my previous sticker builds like the $250 Illidan build were using stickers that I had to buy on the internet. This is a pretty annoying process as you don't have full control over how the stickers turn out, the sizing can be a little tricky sometimes, and then it takes like over a week for them to ship back here to the HQ. If we can make these in-house, then I can just tell my wife what we want, give her all the dimensions like I did here on this chart right here, and then we get the stickers right away. I personally think that all of these stickers turned out amazing, and this really adds to the overall story and character of this gaming PC. This vinyl logo was a bit tricky because the logo font and circle are super thin. I didn't install it 100% perfectly, but it looks good either way. And then the bottom PSU basement sticker ended up being two pieces because we didn't have printer paper that was long enough. We found it later, so we won't have this problem next time, but I absolutely love how this turned out as well. This is a similar design as the Starfield wrapped Xboxes, which is where we got the inspiration from. We also put some extra stickers on the bottom of the front panel and on the CPU cooler. And once I saw how good this looked, you know I had to spray paint this cooler shroud white to seal the deal. More on the CPU cooler later on in the video. But overall, yeah, this is seriously one of my favorite projects that we've ever done with all these little aesthetic boosts that we implemented, but I do agree that we've spent enough time in the aesthetics department, so let's start talking performance. Before we talk about Starfield specifically, because that's indeed a very tough game to run, let's quickly knock out all the other benchmarks just to prove that this is a very solid $400 gaming PC just in general. First up, we tested 3 d Mark's Time Spy, of course, and here we got a score of 6,681. 
on, and that's definitely not bad considering our price point. For reference, our $500 Amazon Prime build from our previous video got a score of 7,889, and my most recent $400 build guide, which had a 3,600 in GTX 1060, only got a score of 4,522. As far as every other game goes, here are the games we tested, and here's some proof that the Ryzen 5 2600X and GTX 1070 Ti is certainly no slouch of a combo. This handled literally every game we threw at it in 1080p perfectly fine, and most of these games were tested with medium or high settings, which you love to see. All except for Starfield. We are definitely not playing that game in 1080p high settings with this build. Now, I don't think this is a surprise to anyone, but Starfield is an absolute beast to run, and it's not terribly unoptimized from what I'm seeing, but rather it's just a super demanding title that requires some serious GPU horsepower. And again, the specs that we're using are literally the minimum required specs to play according to Bethesda. This is just to achieve a playable experience. And honestly, that's about what we got. We tested this build with several different variations of settings for the game, and Sam came to the conclusion that the best way to run this is with 1080p low settings with a 100% resolution scale, and definitely be sure to turn on FSR. There's a big difference in performance you'll see with the ground combat versus ship combat as the game runs much smoother out in space. Using these settings, we got an average of 49 FPS while flying around and shooting, but then we only averaged 35 FPS on the ground shooting enemies. We did run the game with even lower settings like with a 50% resolution scale, and that did get us up to 59 FPS with FSR turned on, at least while flying around, but 50% resolution scale looks pretty bad, which is why we recommended 100% scale, but with lower FPS. And just like usual, we didn't take the time to fully dive in each individual graphic setting and tweak it. I'm sure you could customize a bit better experience than this if you took the time to truly dial that in. Hardware Unbox just released a Starfield GPU optimization guide on YouTube, and in those videos, they explain how much the performance and GPU utilization is affected for every single graphical setting, so give that one a watch if you're interested. As far as our build goes, overall, I think Bethesda did a good job of providing the minimum specs for us because this game ends up certainly being playable, but it's definitely not ideal because it's under 60 FPS. Here's what our entire parts and pricing was looking like, and here you'll see that at the end of the day, our price was $451, but most people aren't gonna follow exactly what we did here, nor do I recommend that you do. Those extra up here white RGB fans were $37, and when you combine that with our $56 case, that's a total of $93 just for the case and fan setup. Instead, if you purchase a case that doesn't suck and does actually include proper ARGB fans, you can easily save 30 to 40 bucks here alone. And just remember, if you are using this build for inspiration, I would really recommend trying to snag a 3600 instead of the 2600X. And for the GPU, the RX 5700 is a better option at the right price, but I would try to jump up to a 5700 XT if you can afford it. And one more thing that I wanted to address here, which you experts may have noticed already, is that our cooling situation is definitely not ideal here. If you look at our gaming footage, you can see that our GTX 1070 Ti, I don't think ever gets above 80 degrees, so that's perfectly fine. But the cooler we have on the 2600X isn't actually the one that the 2600X used to ship with. When this was a brand new product, the 2600X used to ship with the Wraith Spire cooler, which was the beefier one for these X CPUs, but the one we have here is the Wraith Stealth, which isn't as effective. Whenever you buy used hardware, you don't always get exactly what you should get in the mail, so that's why we installed the smaller version with this build. You absolutely should not be trying to overclock this 2600X with the Stealth on there, probably not even a Spire either, if we're being honest. However, the temperatures were good for a normal gaming workload. Most games aren't going to push your CPU utilization up to a true 100%. Under a normal gaming workload, we were getting anywhere from 70 to 80 degrees, which is perfectly fine. If you do a CPU stress test like Cinebench, where the CPU gets pegged to 100% the entire time, this stealth cooler will cause that CPU to get up to that big yikes range of about 90 degrees. So if you want to stay safe, or definitely if you want to do any overclocking, make sure you use a better cooler on here than what we did. But yeah, that was the story of our Starfield gaming PC. This one took a ton of time and lots of component uninstalling and reinstalling, but we got the job done. And honestly, I think this is one of my favorite builds that I've ever done before. We will be selling this over on zttbuilds.com for our next October 1st monthly drop. Shout out to those of you that just snagged the September 1st drop, which sold out in like six minutes. And we'll be selling this Starfield build for $350. So this one will sell very quickly as well. And we did a similar concept to this type of project when Diablo 4 launched. So check out that video that's on the screen now if you wanna see a different budget themed gaming PC.